Hey, hey, what's up, garden friends? How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. Let's make an orchid pie. Just kidding. Is this even, that's not even a pie crit. Well, okay, whatever. I don't know. Foil pan. I have my orchid here. I'm going to go ahead and repot this. Last year, I uh, decided, since I have a lot of orchids that need to be repotted, and so what I've been doing is when they're done blooming, I'm going ahead and repotting them. We can see here, this guy is finished blooming. This bloomed back in October. This is my Epilalia Catlea Volcano Trick Paradise. Had this one for a while, and it is, it's overdue on a repotting. So I thought I'd go ahead sit down chat with everybody while I do that it's not really gonna be like a how-to video or anything like that just a, looking inside the pot looking at the roots I see some dead stuff in there that's going to need to be cleaned up I'll probably actually even be reusing this pot but I'll sterilize it and all that stuff that's enough talking I'm just gonna go ahead and jump in here and get to work okay upon first glance the reason I decided this would be a decent orchid to go ahead and do this video with was because I can tell just from looking at this pot that there's some kind of interesting stuff going on in there. And this is also one of the reasons that I really like clear pots. I can kind of keep an eye on all the happenings within the root zone. I don't know how well it's going to show up on camera, but you can sort of see in here. Well, you can definitely see it, but I don't know if you can see the details of it. There are these small little yellow dots, little clusters of them. Those are showing up in patches all around the root zone down there in the potting medium. I did some searching on what that might be and it looks like it's more than likely a type of mold or fungus. It was a little bit confusing at first because they kind of look like eggs, but most of the stuff I'm seeing out there, which isn't much, it's not looking like these are some type of insect egg. I would try and spend a lot of time diagnosing it, but I don't really see a reason to, just because it's I need to repot it anyways. Oh, and hopefully the audio's okay. I'm sitting to the side of my mic. It won't let me adjust it. It's jammed up. So if it seems like everything's coming through one speaker, it's because I'm sitting on the other side of the camera. Go ahead and glove up here. You know, better safe than sorry. I don't know what kind of creepy crawlers are in here. I've been seeing a lot of house centipedes around and those things, like I'm trying to get good with bugs because they have a purpose, they're living things. But those house centipedes, like, I'm, they just, they give me the willies. They startle me every single time. But we're getting better. Our relationship is evolving. That doesn't mean I want them crawling around on me. Pulling this out. Just looking at the bottom in here, this is why I wanted to uh, definitely go ahead and repot this. Over time, that decomposes. It turns into, like, a mush. Doesn't drain as well. You can see these roots are very well hydrated. That's because I gave this a really hefty soak. I do that so that the roots have a little bit more flexibility to them. Less risk of cracking them. I'm probably gonna lose some roots here. Just kind of the nature of repotting. It can be hard to be as delicate as really need to be as something like this. Oh, fine. There's a little... <laughs> see? That's another thing. That shouldn't even... That shouldn't be going on. There's a fern growing in here. I'm try and pluck that off of there. Kind of cute. We have a new little fern friend here. I'll do something else with that later. I'm not seeing any creepy crawlies in here. I'm sure there's some. I keep my orchids outdoors during the summer months when it's warm enough so insects get in. They do their thing. Okay. Yeah, I see. Look at that. Mold, mold, mold. Definitely time to do this repotting. There's always such a pain getting all of the little bits and pieces of bark out from the roots. Especially when you're trying to not damn it. Well, see, I already cracked that root. Just from barely even touching it. Yeah, this is definitely my least favorite part of repotting orchids, is trying to get all that junk out from in there. Especially in the centers. That's where it's always the hardest to get in there and get that stuff out. But I can see there's a lot that I can cut out from in there. There's lots of old dead roots. I don't know if the green is showing up on camera. The lighting I have set up is more of a warm hue, so but this is in person very green i don't know how it's coming through for y'all but these are very green and healthy and these are not not at all see looking in here i can tell this is definitely time to do this even overdue there's a lot of debris in there like the peat has broken down the bark was starting to break down it was starting to turn into well a soil really i've noticed that's when you start to kind of have trouble you can have root rot and then there's this mold or fungus whatever that is it's all the result of poor drainage and aeration lack of aeration so i'm gonna go ahead dump this out clean it up so that it's safe to put the orchid back in and i'll go rinse the orchid out and just you know all the fun things we'll be right back okay i was getting ready to switch over clean this out sterilize it and then i realized i forgot something really important that i need to cut out those dead roots so I've got my fun rainbowy scissors here. There's been sitting in a cup with a bleach solution. 
I just put some warm water in and just like a few drops of bleach, not very much. Sometimes I use rubbing alcohol. I have a chemical that I use sometimes. It's actually made for sterilizing with scissors, but I don't know where it is right now. And the bleach works fine. No matter what I do here, I'm gonna end up with some bits and pieces of dead root probably still inside of here. But the main thing is that I always wanna actually get in here and get the big clump of the old old roots out. As best as I can anyways, like to really clear that out. Cause that, you know, it all clumps up over time and stuff starts to die, decay, it attracts all the things that break down the dead roots and then all the undesirable things start to happen. So since I have it unpotted, may as well get in here, tidy that up while I can. Just keep on digging in here, pulling out more and more old pieces of bark that were up there. That's looking better, but still a ways to go. I'm gonna work on that and then get to the repotting. I went ahead and, I typically have water in this. I went ahead and put water in a clear water bottle and have peroxide in here. It's, I like to keep it in something you can't see through because it helps preserve the life of the peroxide. As soon as you open up a bottle of hydrogen peroxide, it immediately starts to lose some of its effectiveness just because the air gets in there and oxygen disperses and it's, it's, uh, it's a whole big thing. Anyway, so I'm just gonna come in here, just using that peroxide, spraying it down, making sure it gets really far in there. I'm gonna let it fizzle and bubble and do its thing. I really like using the peroxide because it helps get in there with the, can kill off insects, fungus, bacteria. It can do all kinds of things. And I don't have to worry about it getting in the air and getting back there into the water with the fish because the, all it does is it'll raise the oxygen level in there a little bit. Potentially if there were a ton of it, it could really affect the pH of the water. But it's just, it's nice and safe. That's what I really like about it. Not seeing much bubbling and fizzing going on which i suppose is a really good thing but that's it's also like sort of satisfying that's how you know that everything you've been doing is working but that's all right i'm gonna go ahead and give that like 15 or 20 minutes to do its thing and then i'm gonna give it a really good rinse and let it dry off a smidge and uh after it's had a good rinse i'll get to repotting it which i think i've said at the end of several of these clips okay now i'm gonna repot it nah i need to Need to do this first. All right, so that guy had a while to set. I gave it a really good rinse. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pot it up. Because of that mystery substance that was in there, whether it was a mold or a fungus, I don't, I don't know, uh, which aren't always bad things, actually. Fungus, you know, they break things down and release nutrient, nitrogen and stuff into the, it's not necessarily a bad thing. That's why I wasn't really freaking out about it. Uh, and it's something I've seen before on my other orchids, generally when they've been in pots like this and the soil medium was getting old. So I know that that's something that can happen sometimes when you're... What am I trying to say here? I know, sometimes the molds and the fungus and those things start to develop when things are over potted and things aren't draining very well. Cooler temperatures, which is the temperatures are cooler right now. It's been horrifically cold so I've been struggling to keep this space warm but I mean it's like 70 right now but it got down to 64 in here last night which the orchids enjoy that shift as long as I can get it to go up higher I just wish I could get it to go up warmer but that's that's not it's fine it's fine everything's fine ah, okay no oh, the whole everything I was just trying to get out there is I'm gonna repot this in pure lava this time and if I notice that it seems like it still isn't drying out fast enough I'll pop some holes in the side with a drill I don't think that's going to be necessary because I actually, I have a really hard, difficult, difficult time keeping my orchids hydrated when I use stone. I know it works really well for some people, particularly if you're able to soak them. I just, I don't have the space set up quite right to be able to take a large body of water and soak them. I mean, not this. I don't want to soak my orchids back there unless they're like my Vandas, but these guys, that just wouldn't really work. Oh, and I did take the pot inside sprayed it down with another bleach solution, rinsed it out really, really well, so that's nice and clean. Being a sterile workplace is always important. I think this actually, this is still going to fit in this pot just fine, no problems. Be a little bit tricky getting the lava down in there and around everything. So I'm gonna try and get it down a little bit deeper than this, I think. I always hate when I'm repotting an orchid and as I try and tilt it, try and tilt them, you know, to get the medium to go down underneath the plant. You don't want pockets or anything down there, and you end up slowly as you're doing it, raising the orchid higher and higher and higher, and then you have to start. Or is that just a me thing? I don't know. Wouldn't surprise me if it's just a me thing. Hey, finally, the fun part, watering it in. It doesn't really need it. This guy's pretty well hydrated as it is right now. 
but I still want to do it it helps move the stuff around in there. I feel like it just kind of helps everything to settle into place a little bit more organically and I can check the drainage of the pot and see how long it's taking for the water to come out of there. That's actually good. That's what I wanted to see. I don't want it moving out too fast just because the gravel, this lava, it dries out so much faster than bark does. So I want to be able to see that and know, hey, I'm going to be able to soak this. Took that bag of lava, opened up and let water gush through it a few days ago, and it still looks like there's still some dust in there, so I probably should have stepped my game up on that a little bit. Should be fine, though. I'm not actually going to leave it here to soak, but I don't want to deal with this kind of water in a fragile pan this close to my camera. Um, let's see here. Lift that up. Yeah, that moves through pretty much instantly. Which is good. I want good airflow in here. There have been times when I've repotted something into lava. It's been in something like bark before where it's used to the moisture sticking around a little bit longer. Sometimes I'll take like some sheet moss and drape it over the roots that end up being exposed a little bit. It's just easier to do that than bring the... Because I don't, you don't want the growing points of the plant submerged down there, down to below the medium, so... It's just one of those things. It should be just fine. I'm not worried about it. I'd say that this was a pretty easy repotting as far as those go. I'm just referring to the parts that are kind of exposed where those roots weren't used to being exposed before. Just kind of feel like it helps to ease that transition somewhat. Yeah, there we go. Nice and repotted. See, now I only had that submerged in that water for maybe a minute or two and I can see the condensation in the pot. That's a good sign. I'm happy about that. That lets me know that it's holding on to moisture for a little while. I'll keep an eye on it. Hopefully tomorrow that'll be dried out completely. I don't want it to stay wet for a long time. Like I mentioned, if it does stay wet for a long time, then I'll just go through, pop some holes in the side that allow more ventilation. But I don't, that probably isn't going to be an issue. The humidity is pretty low in here, at least in orchid terms, fairly low. It's about 55% which is actually pretty good because last year I struggled to keep the humidity in here above 38%. So that has been nice. Hopefully the orchids will appreciate it. Oh, and this table, this is, it's not real wood. So it's very easy to sterilize. I'm not doing anything else with my orchids tonight. So tomorrow I can go through and just give it a good spray down and clean up to sanitize it. It's not porous. So if anybody was wondering why I didn't have like papers or anything laid out, I don't really worry about that as long as I'm not doing things with a lot of orchids at one time. Especially not on a surface that I can sanitize so incredibly easily. I can get this sterile, no problem. Super quick and simple. That's how I like things. I like chore type things, that's what I mean. Anyways, hope everybody's doing well. Comment down below, let me know what's going on with y'all and your orchids. Follow me on Instagram at Tropical Plant Party. All my social media is linked down below. We can talk on there, see each other's pictures. It's a lot of fun. Oh, and you may have noticed that there are some gross here that are starting to go I could have cut out. I decided they still had enough green in them. I wanted to leave them be since this only has one really nice healthy growth on it. I'm gonna go ahead and let this guy keep pulling and doing its thing. When they dry up some more, I'll cut those out. I said I was done. Hope everybody's doing well. Don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up. It helps a lot, helps the channel a lot, helps the videos a lot. Overall, just makes me feel good about what I've done. So thank you so much for doing that. And if you haven't already and you'd like to, subscribe as well. I upload multiple times a week, so hit the notification bell. That way you know when new videos come out. Woo, ran out of breath on that one. It's that time of year. More orchid things are gonna be happening. I'm pretty excited about it. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.